now get into my my podcast i gotta say thanks for doing this this is cool and i i'm gonna start with a compliment even though i know that's against finnish culture is to compliment people but i i it's what drew me to you kind of in like wanting to do this is like the fact that you just kind of march to your own beat like it seems like you kind of do what you want to do and that's like super cool to me so i just i gotta make you uncomfortable to start <laughs> yeah you're doing it yeah yeah but like I, the reason i bring that up though is like kind of first and foremost because I, re- i relate a lot to that and like what do you feel like has kind of made you that way like were you always kind of like a little bit different than the friend group growing up or how was it something family or or what do you kind of credit your differentness or that to i don't know it's a hard question and i'm not really good at like self analyzing my my things but and what i do but um maybe 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 because it's because i started this uh like artist thing in quite old age actually i previously only played in bands and i when i was little i played piano and then i went to a like music oriented class in the school and we started to have bands in right quite really fifth grade or something like early age and Um, but the music was always like a hobby for me and and it I was my early in my early 30s when I started this solo career so I kind of came from outside to the business I didn't have that like um conviction from a young age that I want to be a pop star okay. and maybe when i was like five or six years so and i saw europe europe's final countdown for the first time then maybe i thought that this rock star thing would could be nice but then i like forgot it and and kept the music as a hobby and always thought that i will do something else when i grow up and but then the things kind of went um they went wrong and you became a pop star <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah it was kind of an accident <laughs> yeah. because i made this this like um r&b kind of par- parody songs for my friends and my bandmates and uh, they laughed to my at my songs and then i made a little cd uh that i copied for some of my friends and it got like out of hand and uh, suddenly some like real rap dudes heard the cd and i was asked to do a gig uh actually it was um one record store the record record store called lifesaver who had their like birthday party and they asked me to perform there and i said well why not and uh, And that's also when I came up with my this look, which is kind of also maybe a different look from other pop stars. Right. Uh, and because I had a beard, beard then, and I, it was just looking like um, I have this bunny tail, and uh, <laughs> uh, was looking like um like a nerdy musician and i thought that this is not a good look for my gig uh, so okay. i decided to cut off the beard and but then i started from the bottom um, <laughs> i was looking that okay this mustache looks quite good and then also i for some reason i had my father's old uh, like 80s glasses with me and i tried them and i was like yeah this looks also good okay. and and that's how it like then the look so stuck at me for like forever and i'm still still keeping so it was like a kind of conscious effort the or like a conscious thought of like i mean 
it was just like just uh, I just tried to look funny because it was um, like funny music and um, um, and I didn't want to look my like I usually look so. Okay. But then the gig was really like a success, uh, success, and uh, and a friend asked me to to do an album, and I started to do an album, and uh, the album was released up maybe two years after the first gig. But I also at the same time I I did the album. I also started to gig outside of Helsinki also because the rap guys had heard my CD, and I started to appear at like. What was rap the name of the rap hop. guys at that time? Well, um, one one important was um, like uh, Kuningas Pähkinä from Vasa, okay. uh, who is who we made music with Zeta Tamu. And uh, he had a club in Vasa, and he had heard my CD, and uh, and then I went there with uh, e- Evil Evil Stir. If you know the Finnish rapper guy, he was kind of a underground star, okay. and uh, I was just a no-name guy who was like support uh, support act for him. And um, but that was my first gig outside of Helsinki, and um, I started to have more and more gigs, and I was. Um, starting at the moment, then when I did the first demo demos, I was uh, doing like janitor cleaning guy jobs, uh, cleaning the, okay, clean yeah. the metro stations and the schools and bank and kind of. But then I started to study. Um, I went to engineering school, but at the same time I ha- started to have these gigs, and I, then I just thought that maybe well. well I could try to be a like a solo artist and quit the school and, and yeah, so I am you now. You didn't graduate then, or you did? No. Okay. No. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that turned out. Or it's mm. crazy. It was just like by accident. Yeah, like everything that happened to me, like career-wise, has been a kind of an accident. Okay. So the second accident was like. Um, couple of years after that I've done or maybe the first album came out 2006 it was Steak Dog with name Steak Dog and, uh, and then other Steak Dog album came out maybe 2008 and by 2010 or 11 or something I was really kind of thinking that I quit that the uh, joke is Oh, over it's, it's like it's it's the gig is done kind yeah, of okay. yeah I didn't came up with much new ideas and was also starting to study um movie sound uh, in um uh in a nowadays auto university but it was like taideteollinen korkeakoulu okay. at that time and I thought that I will switch to movies, and um, but then um, my friend had an idea that maybe we could do um, one more album um, and do like um, country versions of the old Stig Dog songs because we were really into Hank the Third and okay. uh, kind of like underground or outlaw country country thing and then we started to do that all then there was this uh wooden music and kill pile of thing uh, at the same time when i went with a like new kind of song uh, it was which was not r&b or hip-hop at all Ooh, that song? it was called laulu okay it was also first song i didn't write myself i usually used to write all the songs myself but that was like uh friends did that that one and i said uh, that's a really good song and maybe i could do that now then uh, then i'm i'm country artist now and i can do different kind of songs and they were not eager to give it to me because they wanted to give it to some like um bigger artist and but then this um wooden music in kilpailu thing like eurovision contest yeah. uh, started and um, and they were like maybe you can go there and from the song there and uh, I went and um, 
it went really good. I think I was third or okay, something, yeah. but I was. That's like third. when you drop the dog, right? Yeah, I dropped the dog there, and um, I changed my image. I took away the like um, parody clothes and uh, okay. started to look more like myself, and and I kind of. Um, bigger audience then recognized me and I did start to do I, the school where, where I was started to like okay. be less interesting and I quit that school also and now I'm like continuing it continuing on that path with the with the movie st type of stuff uh, or no I or the engineer um, that the movie school was the last school I went and but I know I haven't done anything there for a couple of years but I maybe someday I will go back to there and finish my studies I I'm always always almost almost I was uh, I was wondering about yeah. the movie side of things cuz like I'll watch the music videos and they're always like somewhat unique and like I feel like I was like I was wondering how much input you had in them cuz I know you do like everything musically or kind of have your hand in everything and so i was like i wonder how much he has in terms of the music videos too because the like there and i thought maybe maybe he wants to be an actor at some point because you got always have skits in them yeah like there's always some little skit like within it that isn't just a music video it feels like yeah. i have to say i i I haven't had so much input for the videos, okay. but I have lots of friends who are into that business. And the first ones we did were with a friend who was in a movie school by the time. And then we got some equi equipment and like personnel from the, that school. And and I've always wanted to make like funny and like different kind of videos. So. But I haven't like um, um, written them myself, or um, but it's always been a team effort and um, and uh, friends helping there. And uh, then I did these um, videos with Edu Edu Kehäkettunen, uh, who has this um, friend called Tommy, who they did the all kinds of funny rap videos together. They had this other projects and uh, I was a fan of them. Where's and Tommy from? Um, from Espoo. Okay, uh, okay, I know uh, Tommy, the yeah. rap crew yeah. there, but Senioki. <laughs> not, not same Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Then I was really happy when I got chance to work with Edu because I was an Edu fan and uh, I liked his like, humor. Okay. Humor, it was always, always like... Um, Kind of the attitude I liked uh, in Finnish rap. I was not so much into like a hardcore, like hip hop um, stuff. And like, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit like um, strict or not so. Like you uh, have to have a certain image or, yeah, or kind and of a I'm certain upbringing or history or whatever yeah, you mean or yeah like that and I, w I, w I was always more into the funny stuff and that's why it was so fun to work with Edu and do this uh, really cheap videos we have a really really like yeah small oh, that's, budget that's the and video of uh, what, what the Finnish Y gets me uh, Rupi. Ru is that uh, we did um, Kuli. Kuli, yeah. Kuli, but loopy, 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 yeah, loop, yeah. loop, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we did. Um, so you guys are just like in the forest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I think the video cost like one hundred euros, <laughs> and most of it was a taxi. Taxi when we drove to the forest, it was like eighty euros or something. Oh, so okay. And then the rest went to the like mustard bottles and. Uh, other stuff but uh, oh uh, maybe the master bottles for the expensive stuff yeah, yeah. that looks <laughs> 80 80 euros and the taxi was like 20 euros and that's it <laughs> and but yeah after the like the change from the parody hip-hop i um, then started to we had more budget to do videos well 
well, not ac- it actually because the uh, most expensive videos I've done were during the stick dog times because okay. that was a really really good time for YouTube videos and there was really many views and you could could get really many sponsors and uh, and so if what you had the biggest uh, mm, budget then what maybe a song called like Vadelma Sukla because there was a Valio the big like a mayor uh, milk company okay. Valio uh, was uh, paying it and we like shoot for two days and we had um, like we shoot it on 35 millimeter film and uh, it really I don't even know how much it cost but it was really like a really expensive vi- okay. for music video in Finland and nowadays we don't have any budget anymore because it nobody compare to that no oh, no shit. not at okay. all not at all like mm, it's changed nobody watches music videos uh, maybe someone someone watches and we still do them but uh, not on every song well yeah like I mean, we used to did the mtv used to show music videos and now yeah. it never shows that yeah like and we don't I'm have any program in finland uh, neither who would show them so it's only the youtube and maybe people are also maybe using spotify and other like yeah. these kind of services more so youtube is also not so not so on fire nowadays so yeah that's true mm. it's but a good i mean because it's nostalgic for me like a good music video that is creative and a story and uh is something special because of like how i grew up with mtv and all that yeah. stuff that kind of gets lost but i guess that's what i think of you know like roy oberson one off the top of my head like there's like a there's a theme to it you know it's not just yeah. a lot of rap videos or any kind of video is just like the guy in front of the camera and that's you know just rapping with homies behind him or something like y- there's a story in that video yeah that's the same with my songs even though they are like uh just a little humorous uh, like yeah. um, songlets but uh, still there's i always like that there's uh, some kind of story in it so it's not just like i'm here to rap or sing and you have to listen what i have to say and uh, yeah it's more boring to me and i'm always trying to also tell my colleagues younger colleagues that are starting out that, that try to make a story out of it so it's more interesting when you you can tell the same thing like in a format of a story or then the boring way is like i think um i don't like wine okay it's a boring way to say it, but then you can say i went to a bar and tasted the wine and spit it out yeah then oh yeah yeah, yeah. D- like a yeah no it the story mm-hmm. aspect is huge mm-hmm. and i mean that's it's funny for me because i am a fan of the music even though i don't understand like a word really you know mm-hmm. but the my buddy that my coach who's also my buddy who kind of like got me into like uh, i guess i'll tell that story for is like cuz like i said before we got on camera like this whole meeting is pretty fucking crazy for me because especially when you hear this story is like I got here last December. Yeah. A little over a year ago. I was at my coaches for Christmas. We were pretty drunk, like one, two in the morning. And he's like, you know who Stieg is? And I was like, no, I don't. I just moved here. Oh, you gotta see, you gotta see. So we show, he shows a couple music videos. And like one of the first one is the uh, cunning is Cobra. And I'm like, like I said, in the beginning, I was like, I just fuck with this guy's like he doesn't care kind of you're like you know it has that thing and so at this time I was still doing the podcast but I've I've gained a little bit of a reputation through TikTok throughout this time none of that was happening but I made up in my mind I was like yo I'm going to get him on the pot like we're going to do a podcast together and if we go back and you look I fucking messaged you drunk as fuck at like two in the morning on Christmas Eve saying, 
hey, bro, what's up? I just moved to Finland, you know, like, and of course you don't read it. But then it was, I was like, okay, how can I, how can I make this shit happen? And I was like, okay, well, I like that song. I like the dance. I was like, I'm going to score a touchdown. And I don't score a lot of touchdowns myself. I normally throw them. I was like, but I'm going to score a touchdown. I'm going to do the dance. That's going to get his attention. Like, basically kind of what happened. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that <laughs> I, saw worked. The, yeah. I saw the video. I don't know if you sent it to me or maybe even saw it before you sent it to me. Uh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, ah, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just had a bunch of people tag you. And like, bro, for it to work how it did, like, I'm a believer in the universe and a little bit hippie with that kind of stuff is like I'd hardly ever score like I said but for me to score like in the middle of the field the way I did and then the camera to be set up right there and I was like this is my like as it <laughs> happened I was like no fuck I was like this is my fucking time and like drop it and like go into it and like all my all my boys from back home have no clue about the dance so they're like what the hell are you doing I was like no there's trust me there's a, a thing to it so that was like the the it took uh, over a year of like plotting it out in my mind a little bit but that's why i said in the elevator it was super surreal to do this shit because i i just like knew you know like i i just kind of knew yeah that's a cool story <laughs> yeah. and i have to say you you said you don't usually do touchdowns and i don't usually do this kind of <laughs> thing so much i've been uh, i think in one or two podcasts before okay. in my life also i don't i don't listen to podcasts i'm kind of old school in that manner yeah. i just watch tv and <laughs> and maybe youtube sometimes but yeah. yeah the podcasts are a little bit out of my territory but um, the dance uh, and the touchdown <laughs> dance really get, got into my heart so <laughs> i cool. couldn't say no <laughs> no I, i just thought to myself i was like that's that's the way and the week before i had almost scored but like i ran out of bounds at like the fu like close to the end zone and i thought to myself like like because i've now played a long time my goal i'm trying to not get hit as much as possible i want to play for as long as i can and so i like i'll be safe unless it's like a do or die situation so i i played it safe and i was regretting it the whole whole next week like fuck, that was my chance to do it because that was i think the only touchdown i scored last year really and i but then for the next week for it to happen i was like no that that was the because it, the week before The camera was on the other side. Like, it wasn't going to be the same yeah. thing. So, like, I guess, I mean, I guess you kind of, but once you started, like, then being Stieg, like, ha has your career, like, do you have any kind of moments like that of, like, yo, I know this shit's going to happen, even if it's a little crazy? I mean, I, like, doing what you're doing maybe is that, but, like, do you have a an instance like that at all? Mm, yeah, I had instance like that like many times and I'm also a little bit of a hippie when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I, I believe that there is some kind of johdatus in Finnish. I don't know what it's in English, but um, I kind of uh, don't know what I believe in, but I surely believe that there is some something or somebody guiding us uh, sometimes totally to some direction and uh, but not on my career i've been kind of passenger all the time then i'm i have had uh, like really i think many situations where i've been really lucky and bumped into opportunities and also i have had friends who have helped me a lot and uh, without them i wouldn't be sitting here and one of them are is um edu of course well, and um, the other one i have to mention is dj pp also known as street cobra okay 
That's, who, is that the bald guy? Yeah, the bald guy. Okay. Yeah, okay. Was, uh, my videos also, and he was um, my DJ for many years, and also helped me with um, getting record contracts, contracts and stuff because he's the social guy. I'm the quiet guy, okay. and uh, not so upfront about my doings. And but he was the like my my left hand who helped me to arrange things and how, and do you, how do you know him i've known him for like a um, teenager okay. almost uh, through some common friends and we've been roommates also before we started to make music but we started to make like music kind of this my solo thing and he's like producing and he started as a like a hip hop producer and is now a like record label boss and my he's running the Etene Records which I'm in also okay. I'm recording recording for the Etene label at Warner Music so we are still working together not he's not my DJ anymore that was a little bit too much for like um, we did it many years and we started to remind like be like an old couple and <laughs> arguing <laughs> okay. arguing all the time and um, but now it's much better <laughs> than when we see each other more seldom and <laughs> but we still work together and um, actually i have now a new single coming um in friday oh, i don't know okay. when this comes out but um, probably around friday yeah, yeah. actually yeah probably something like that so you may be maybe you maybe it's out and you can go and listen to my new single isomunan and mies it's like a something mm, egg big egg big but big egg but man so like big dick yeah okay. man <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not about myself <laughs> <laughs> i have to I have to say it every time I say the name of the song that it's 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 a fictional song, but he's, he's, uh, oh, mm. me, he's big dick, oh, mm. yeah, big dick man. All right, big dick those man. are like three of mm. the words in Finnish I know. Mm. So that's <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. ask why, don't ask why. And that's also I did it with um, with um, um, a team with Janne Huttunen and Kaisa Korhonen, uh, friends I have written lately. But DJ PP uh, produced it this time, so okay. we are like. Also, he produced uh, or helped me to produce the Kuningas Cobra. I did the demo myself, and Street Cobra helped me to finish it, and and also the Kuka on se Oikea, which was the other hit song from my uh, Fine Elma appearance. Right. Um, um, who is the right one? Oh, who is the right? Okay. Um, and so we have kind Kiki, of get Kiki back Kiki. to making music. We had many years we didn't make music together. We only did the gigs, and but now we are because we are in better terms. So <laughs> we can make make music also, and it's been fun because it's kind of I think it, uh, it it's like. What they talk about food um, in Finnish, lähiruoka. I don't know what it's in English, but the food that is grown nearby. Oh, yeah, like local. Local, local food, food yeah. and we are kind of making local music. So I'm, I'm mostly writing with people I know, with friends, and uh, my, my good friend, okay. PP is producing and uh, and and. And uh, it's really like a it's come full circle in a way. And a small like circle yeah. also, and um, and I have this big record record company Warner Music behind my back, and they are helping with the promotion. And uh, but I also have kind of um, liberties that maybe all the artists in Finland and in the world uh, don't have because. Like this interview, I yeah. just we, I didn't have to ask anyone. Uh, that okay. I, I can I can just do some stuff on my own also, and also we have a kind of um, free hands with the music also. Uh, there's nobody saying that you can't do this or you can't do it. So we just have a really little team, PP and one other guy, and we are listening to my demos and um, trying to find out find the next single and that's it and 
there's no like big machinery except the like the promotion thing but it's also it's not so huge in finland and uh, as they say a uh, big record company in finland is uh, about the same size than a large prisma market so okay. it, uh, I love yeah. Prisma, though. Mm. That's like my favorite store here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, you kind of have the free, you have the freedom almost mm. because what's gotten you to this point has yeah. been like doing shit that's yeah, outside and of the box. You kind think? of, kinda, you exactly. Know, like, yes, that like I'm not like breed and 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 raised by a record yeah. company. And I don't know, not many are to nowadays because so many are making music independently. So also it's more convenient for record labels to like catch the good ones from from like SoundCloud and and hop on board like yeah uh, instead of like trying to make everything from zero, finding the singers and putting up a boy or a girl band yeah. and uh, like training them and uh, giving dance lessons and uh, it's too much work when you can just like listen to some like soundcloud yeah. rappers and sign the best one and and that's kind of i had kind of had my own thing before i jumped to the like uh, music business i did my first two albums with friends uh, uh, with really small labels and um, that was the mm. I, I looked this up the uh, un, un polte or something um oh. other labels yeah, or uh, the uh, well, the group oh, 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 well, oh. wasn't there a group with two people maybe i'm uh the first i did with uh yun, yun numbers uh, I don't know what to what I'm trying to, to Y O with the dot N P O L T. Oh, Yuan Yuan Paul. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was a like side project with okay. the, with the guy I mentioned earlier, the set of Tamu and Kuningas Pahkina. Okay. From Vasa. Uh, um, okay, okay. I was actually like I said, my finish uh, is bad. <laughs> actually, I had a gig in Vasa and met the guys, and we decided to make some music and. Uh, we did that one song, Tyttö sinä olet meritähti, girl, you are uh, like a sea, fish, sea star, what, okay. what is that thing? And we just did the song and we sent it to our publisher, actually the Tommy guy you saw there, and he he was not running a, like a record label at the moment, but he was like, oh, this is a good song, maybe we can put it out together, and we he released that um, published published that and in a week uh, one guy from Finnish um, radio Yle X heard it and was that is like a good song we could maybe play it and then they started to play it and it became a kind of a hit and we have like zero promotion we didn't even have a like a um, real record label Wait, what year was this this was like 10 years ago okay. or something and we still have the Yuan Polte project we have mm, released a couple of singles after the first one they have haven't been so big of hits but uh, we still do music sometimes and release okay. maybe a um, single like in uh, like 5 years okay okay <laughs> time apart so but it's a side project and the guys are doing their own own thing in Vasa and um, I don't know actually where they live nowadays but, but that was the first place I lived mm, in Finland was Vasa yeah and but yeah I've had these side projects and feature fe feed things and um, and it's also kind of um, um possible for me to do those because I'm um I have I don't have so like strict plans for next five years or something like somebody maybe maybe many people are doing this like with little more um 
planning and the structure, uh, the yeah, development. and um, yeah, and they and I I really look up to that kind of working uh, like ethics, and I don't say it's a bad thing, but I've always been a kind of a tourist <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just oh well, this went uh, even when I had these hit songs like like Kuningas Cobra and um, and Roy Orbison is maybe my biggest hit. I've not been like uh, it's been nice, but I've not been like ec- ecstatic and like oh this is now I'm on my oh, I made it I made it. I'm it be more like yeah I, I'm glad that people like this song and now I can make more songs and I can I can make gigs couple of years because I had this hit song <laughs> yeah. and it's really nice and but I don't really know how that happened and um, like do you feel like when you were I want to ask f- at some point the like origin of cunning is cobra but maybe after and like the dance since it kind of brought us here but when with those two that are kind of the big hits do you feel like while you're making them in the moment it's the big hit or do you always feel like it's the big hit or do you how how does that work for you yeah i always feel like the last song i made is the is a hit yep. and um, <laughs> exactly. i don't really know which one is really going to be until until the yeah. fact i will <laughs> i don't know i don't i really didn't know that troy orbison was going to be a hit yeah. i think it was a really nice song um, but I thought that I have better songs on the album, so but it's a really good first single, and then I have the really, really hit, hitty songs. Uh, but it turned out to be <laughs> different, and uh, other songs were not hits, but th- that one was, and also the Kuningas Cobra. I, I, I did the demo myself and it was um, really different than other songs what what I did in that fine edema and I thought that this is really different and uh, really different than a- it's anything it's essentially a cover right yeah it's a like cover it's an old song uh, I it's know a, I, I'm pissed I can't understand Finnish because I want to like mm-hmm. watch that show in a way because it mm-hmm. It's a unique sh- concept for a show, yeah. you know, that we don't have in the states at all. Yeah, it's an old old song, and it was actually it's actually from fifties or something um, uh, from an artist called Anki Tahti and Onni Gideon Orchestra. It was kind of a okay. Hawaii, Hawaiian thing they yeah, did. Yeah, I, I there think I've I think I've heard the the original. Yeah, and it's really nice. And also that Arya Koriseva, uh, s- who was with me in the Van Elma, have yeah. done a cover version of it. Ah, and that's okay. why I choose that song from Arya's. Okay. Oh, uh, so there's even a mm. an older one before her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah, know that. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. The Arias version is from nineties, I think, okay. and the uh, old one is from, I think, fifties or something. And um, but yeah, I I thought that this is a really funny song and really different kind of song that I've done. Like, I I really hadn't done anything like that before, and uh, I I thought that this could be a hit but it's really a, like a hit or miss or yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Kind well of and like with the how the how the hell does the dance come up for it and that's actually also a funny story <laughs> because uh it's a part of this lahi lahi music local music concept okay. because i d- we didn't have any dance initially um then i was already in the um, in the shooting of the wine elema there at uh, satulina place and uh, I had this um, Arias day coming in a couple of days and then I started to think that what will I do when the like instrumental part comes I don't have anything to do okay. I uh, DJ PP was coming to be my DJ on that performance so I asked him if he could come up with some kind of dance and he was like yeah um, at a my countryside at the moment but i can ask my daughters if they can because they are like doing the 
TikTok dance thing uh, every day and maybe they can come up with something and but then the girls had other things to do so <laughs> so PP then had to do the choreography by himself so <laughs> I got a I got a video from him next day and where he's in the like the cottage in the country house and okay now look and you do like this and and then he also said that remember to do it like a real snake, really like okay. sharp moves, okay. and uh, and then that was that was uh, it. He uh, came so next day. He came to the shootings, and we did that. And and so, but the first time you did it was on like the show, basically. Like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. because it <laughs> now it's cool, you know. Like, but were you also kind of thinking like? what the fuck are we, you know, like, because you don't know, you know, it takes, like, balls in a way, because it's like... Yeah, but it's, 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 it's really easy, easy to learn, so... Yeah, but, but, but I mean, that's, that's why it That's why so, it went yeah. viral also, because everybody learned there in the shooting, we did uh, one, like, maybe one practice shot or something, okay. and... Oh, 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 I don't think we even did a practice, but we, like, by, by the third chorus, everybody yeah. was... Yeah. Um, the dance there and um, it was but it was not planned until like two days before <laughs> the shoot so shout out djp yeah <laughs> that's yeah because i mean like it's just it, it trips me out because you know when i see at the concert and you got everybody doing it and just knowing then like because i try and always like think of the step before the step and it's like, at one point, it had to be an idea of like, should we even do this? You know, like, yeah. you know, should I do it? Like, because it seems easy to say, yeah, it's a good idea now. But at the moment, it's kind of like, uh. I'm kind of learned and uh, that that kind of things are just the things you have to do mm. when you are a little un uncertain that should I do it then? Uh, not always, not not like I don't mean in like in like everyday life or yeah yeah because yeah because that different you it's al 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 almost every time it's better not to do <laughs> it if you are like uncertain if I should make this like um, social media post or should I react to these friends. Mm, uh, message or something if you're uncertain it's always better not to do it but in like this profession of mine it's the opposite yeah, that, uh, yeah. and also the mm, Finnish artist G. Karjalainen who I'm, I'm a fan of and and I remember he said in an interview that the best lyrics are always the ones that you are Really, really not sure if you are even willing to, willing to perform them. Are you feeling a little bit shy about them? Uh, and, uh, uh, and they are always the best ones. Uh, so I'm kind of always remember that. So th that's that that's why we're going with Big Dick Man, then, right? <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> that's exactly the kind of song when I when I see my like iTunes playlist and there is the song name and. Really, are we releasing that song? Yeah, oh, it's coming in a week, and then I'm like, yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> good that I feel like this because it's always better to like make an impact than to make um like that's the worst thing you can do as a as an artist uh, to make a song and everybody is like, yeah, this is quite okay. That's like the totally the worst worst case scenario so no for sure that's the thing i've learned and even like i see it with you because being here in finland people ask me oh do you listen to any finnish music and i really don't but i'll be like yeah i like Stieg, you know like i i rep that and like it's a polar it's a polar yeah. response it's either people are like oh yeah me too or like yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, and but that's I mean, I've learned it, like I said, through the TikTok thing of posting some clips that just speak in my mind that people either really love them or really hate them. Yeah. But you said 
it. You said it perfectly. If someone's just like, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Like then you're, you want to generate some emotion yeah. one way or another and love and hate are basically the same thing, but just different sides of the coin. Yeah. And that's a scientific fact also yeah. that the radio stations have done their research and, um, and they are like, um, continuously testing the songs they are playing and um, asking people what they like and the um, worst case for them is that the, like it's okay thing. yeah but when half of the people hate and half of the people love then that's the like ideal situation yeah for them it, also they're gonna talk about it anyway yeah and well so how then i mean I, you don't seem like a super big social media kind of guy, but then how no, kind of knowing how do you deal with maybe like the self-consciousness of knowing some people don't like what you're doing? Cause that's something I've like struggled with a little bit, like through like not necessarily, it's just like we talked about in the elevator of, I can't imagine you going out to the bar just because it, in person, it's always going to be positive, like responses, like no one's going to tell you you suck, like to your face or that hey, I don't well, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it has happened. Yeah, it has happened. But uh, more often it's positive yeah. and, and uh, Finnish people are also quite shy. So, so it's only the bars and yeah. the weekends when people come to talk. But when I go to supermarket or walk in the street, nobody yeah. stops me. And but at the bar, it's different. But it's mostly positive. One thing I learned in a, like in a really beginning of my career is not to read the, like the. Um, chats in the internet yeah. about you. I did it and it's really harsh sometimes and but it really doesn't do any good to read them so I always say to my colleagues who are starting out that just don't read the comments okay. and and if there are comments on your own social media posts and stuff just delete them or just like them. I, I always like them if somebody Somebody is calling me names or anything or something. I always put a little heart <laughs> <laughs> and, and then forget it. So and always try to remember that you are not the same person you are. I don't know. Maybe it's different for the kind of stuff you do. But for me, I have my personal life and I have my public image and it of course it's different and uh, the other critic criticism that comes it's it's towards that public image not like me as pussy yeah true see it on end so um, i just try to not to yeah no that um, that is a that is like a big difference in a way because even though mm, i'm still i go by my there is somewhat of a a character I'm playing to a degree, even if that character is myself. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. is, which is weird. Cause I was on, uh, international house hunters. Like when I lived in Poland where like, you're going around town looking okay. for a new apartment yeah. and I'm myself on it, but we do it like five takes for everything. And so when I watched it with my homie, he was like, dude, you're kind of a good actor. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, I'm myself. He's like, yeah, but that's not you, bro. You know, like, mm. that's not exactly you. And so, I mean, have you seen the new uh, Kanye documentary at all? On no, he, I haven't seen he it. He makes a, like, in the last one, um, the third episode, he makes, like, a a statement that, like, okay, now I'm, now that I made it, I'm kind of, like, starting to create this character. Like, it's bit, it was a, a conscious idea that he is going to become Yeezy or yay or like a little outspoken and crazy and all the Taylor Swift stuff and all that stuff. Like, have you kind of felt like there's a, like a little bit you've created a character? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
and at start especially when it was all about the funny character and right. um, it was like an Ali G kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ali G, almost mm. like Weird Al. Yeah, yeah Weird yeah. Al and that kind of thing. But um, nowadays, when I'm more like mm, being myself as an artist, I still still notice that I always, when there is camera or microphone, or I'm not totally same. Okay. Than with friends or family, or and of course because. Mm, you like unconsciously realize that you there is people watching and yeah. you kind of have maybe a little character but i'm really bad at acting you <laughs> you said earlier before we started shoot that i'm a good actor or something yeah or like you guys no, always no, have skits in the videos yeah that's yeah. true but i'm on I think I play myself there, and yeah, I'm okay. really not good acti- at acting. And I've been in one short movie. I had a little role, and I think I was really, <laughs> really <laughs> shitty actor in that one. And it's not my thing, really. But I'm, but still, I think I can't be uh, completely normal in a situation where there's camera or microphone yeah. or something but i'm trying i'm uh, trying and i'm trying to learn to be because um actually that wine elama um, was kind of important bec- for me because uh, that was kind of the first time i was in a tv as myself for okay. longer times and talk something what i think and um, and also now I have done like a couple of these kind of podcasts where I talk more about myself and and I'm feeling like I'm learning to be more open about myself and not acting yeah, so much, but yeah. it's hard and uh, it. But it's not it's not something that uh, it's only about like performers or. and uh, kind of public figures because it's something that people do also in their like everyday life I you talk differently to different people uh, to if you talk in phone or something then you really sound like a other other person if you're talking to your mother or if yeah. you are talking to your best friend or if you are talking to your lawyer or you have many faces yeah yeah that's and that's something i've like really tried to mm, like trying to figure out only the one mask you know that i'm wearing because it it is natural but i think it's necessary in certain cases but then i think it can fuck people up mentally when you're like constantly if if the masks are like very drastic and so it's funny you say the thing about Talk, like when I talk to my mom, like obviously we don't talk about maybe the same stuff that I would mm-hmm. talk with my best friend about, but it's fairly similar to the point where a friend will be like, "Who are you talking to?" I'm like, "Oh, my mom." They're like, talk to your mom like <laughs> like yeah. not n- bad, but just the yeah. the way we talk. Yeah, and uh, that's a good thing. But then it's it's good thing to notice that we have a tendency to like put put on the mask. And maybe, like you said, trying to trying to get rid of it, and um, because I think it's always like um, everything that's making more <laughs> different uh, kind of boxes into yeah. our lives and um, and lines to separate uh, is it mental or physical or anything that's not good for your mental health. So that kind of why i also trying to learn to so that's like a a conscious effort right now or in a way like in a way and and one reason when why why i said yes to this because this was kind of scaring also because i have to speak english and 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 but that's exactly exactly kind of thing i'm happy to do because i'm i'm learning here um, maybe 
maybe maybe it's also good good for my career or something but that's not the main point yeah um, no i mean that i was literally gonna ask you i was like why'd you say yes to this <laughs> because like it, it like from the you know it's different if it's a fucking interview with yeah. the, the e channel or mtv or so, you know i'm just some random dude that in you know and like who knows but yeah. This is learning experience yeah. for me yeah. also like this language wise because um I have this um I'm uh, you asked me if I'm going to do English songs someday oh, yeah. earlier, maybe before the camera went on, but maybe maybe just not for Stig, but I have this other project uh, my which I had before I had this Stig thing. I had a project called Musa Basha. Okay. It's Basha was my like what I was called in in school and like nickname nickname okay. nickname yeah Basha and Basha which nowadays means actually shit uh, oh really yeah, <laughs> okay. but, but it didn't mean then when when, when we when we were What's kids Musa? but Musa is like music okay okay m- music and I did I did this um, EP kind of like disco techno thing and i also did some gigs with laptop and i didn't sing at the time but now i'm kind of have thought that i will revive that project and uh, and i will make new disco techno songs and i maybe will sing also and maybe in english but also in french I oh shit really <laughs> this one Cover, you speak cover French? I really don't, but I have studied French and I okay. can pronounce it a little bit. Okay. So but I really can't speak it or understand it, but I can pronounce a little bit. And I have this one cover song in my head, which I will do a okay. techno version, and and maybe maybe I will be a international star yeah. someday. So it's good to practice now. Uh, it's got English interviews. Yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> I was I was gonna say like, I heard a rumor that you're gonna make a K-pop song or a reggaeton song. You know, like because it's it's funny like looking at the Wikipedia page and seeing it's a Finnish hip hop, R and B, pop, and country <laughs> singer. It's like, well, what the you know yeah. like. <laughs> I've actually tried to do K-pop songs also, <laughs> Shut b- b- up. not as an artist but as a writer. Uh, really, that's kind of also have been my side project for okay. years to make songs for other artists too and that's why partly why i'm here at this studio because my publisher elements music is keeping their office there and uh, at one time i did actually quite much this kind of song mm, co-write camps and went abroad also to germany and okay. even united states i was in la war for one week okay. r- riding and and like 10 years ago i did that quite much and then the k-pop things that started to be a thing uh, in and they were and are still looking for songs uh, all around the world and i've also tried to do songs for that market but it's really hard it's so different kind of aesthetics there and the songs are not the same that we do here in so in you're just like producing that side of mm, thing kind or? of yeah kind okay. of producing okay. more and um, and but we also did one english lyric for um that was camp uh and there was some uh, people from around the world, and we had this uh, group where it was me and this one Risto Asikainen, my studio mate, from the n- room next door, and then one a guy from I don't remember if he was from Japan or Korea, and uh, he was supposed to be the like the lyricist guy, but it turned out that he can't like speak English like at all. And <laughs> and then we just had to write the lyrics with Risto, uh, even though we have haven't like done it ever before. And but it went quite well because that 
song went to the uh, uh, in an album from an artist called Helena Paparazzio, who is quite big in Greece okay. and Sweden, and uh, it was it was also like uh, the titles of the album or the the song we song we came up. Yeah, was yeah I said that completely yeah. as a joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's hard. I'm as you may have noticed, the I'm not very flu- fluent English speaker well, an hour, or an hour of us talking I can, would say yeah, I can and it gets better when you are bro- broad for sometimes and you use it and it starts starting to get better but now now I haven't had a chance to use it use English for a long time because of covid and things and it's and also I I think in Finnish so the ideas come up in Finland and it's hard to find the words and in Finnish has so much like mm. I swear it's like riddles half the time like w- like mm. the expressions and stuff just don't translate it yeah seems like. yeah you can't just straight up translate the lyrics because there is so different it's uh, it's actually funny to translate the <laughs> uh, English and Finnish expressions like straight uh, like wrongly but um yeah, Finnish is. Uh, but I'd like to. I'd like to write in English because it's much easier in a way that the words are shorter and mm. uh, there's so much more rhymes. True. W- the Finnish words are long and. Um, and a lot of them end in a. Uh, yeah, they so like, like the everybody. Same, yeah, yeah, it's like the same yeah. rhyme pattern. Yeah. We have this um, this like web page called. Um, Rimirenki, it's like rhyme. Mm, I don't know what's Renki, it's kind of a agricultural worker. Okay. Um, Rimirenki site where you can find the ri- Finnish rhymes, you just write up. <laughs> and we so oh, everybody use word, it. You need, every a, you need a word to rhyme with that? Yeah, okay. and I, that's a little like a secret, but everybody nowadays use it, ah. use it. So thank, thank you for the Rimi <laughs> Renki. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Guys, that. I don't know. I was I was thinking there's there's like a couple videos I see on TikTok of someone rapping, and I can't even remember who. I, although I went to Hoodfest in Quopio last year, and but just whatever it is, like it sounds good, but I'm like everyone, almost every line ends in ah. Yeah. yeah. And so like. In a way, it's cool because you can say a lot of stuff, yeah. but then you can't get as creative, I guess, with English, maybe. Mm, yeah, maybe, and and also it's because the words are long; it's much harder for a listener to catch the lyrics. So you uh-huh. must really take care of that. You don't use too many like too complex words, and also you also you have to make the volume a little bit higher than in English lyrics because otherwise nobody understands <laughs> anything and and there it's a tricky language to write but yeah and maybe maybe I could try try, try writing some English lyrics with that Musa sure. Basa project and if it maybe that'd be cool I well know. I have a a weird when I was like 16 8 to 18 like 8 mile was a big uh big influence on me and i i used to like write raps and shit like that and i think i got pretty good flow i'm i'm jealous of kids nowadays because uh, speaking more from the states and stuff is you can be a professional video game player now and you can be like a white guy from the suburbs and be a rapper which like when i was growing up that wasn't really possible it was like Eminem or Paul Wall you know like for the most part and so I have this weird idea in my mind like all right in 2031 I'm gonna have some song out because one of my best friends is a producer artist uh, every like you guys remind me of each other a little bit with just like personality and stuff and so I'm like yeah 2031 so maybe I'll uh, 
maybe that'll be my my feature my my time it'll be ready then but (laughs) no but what's like your process like with writing and making music and do you have kind of a formula for like how do you get the idea of uh whatever it may be because i know your shit's always kind of witty well when i started i kind of I have done some uh, music before with computer, like in quite an early age. Actually, I started using Amiga 500 for making making music, but only instrumental music and okay. the lyric thing just came after I found Edu and the other guys, and then I thought that maybe I can write something funny because I didn't think I can write anything like real or like touching or kind of that that kind of stuff but then I thought maybe I can write some funny rhymes and then I made my process was that I made a track with computer and then I tried to find funny lyrics and funny rhymes and I actually was really strict about the rhymes when I started. I just wanted that the rhythms match throughout the song. If I sing like in the first verse, I sing Then the second one must go with the same rhythm. And if there is one extra syllable or f1 next my what's the top yeah, uh, yeah syllable. then i was i have to figure this out and i was really going with long words yeah <laughs> yeah and i was making this kind of um the counter count counter what's tavu i don't know the like tavu like ta. uh, uh um like when you divide the word yeah, yeah, the yeah. syllables. Syllables, yeah, syllables, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was really like, counting them and really strict about it. But And that's how I did uh, like two first albums, all the, almost all the music I did by myself. The DJ PP was with me, with me in a couple of songs and... Also, lyric-wise, I did most of the stuff myself, but a um, couple of songs I did with DJ PP, and, mm, and then I, when I started this Stig thing, it's really changed because I we started to use real instruments, and I didn't have, I couldn't do it in my home studio, so I mm. just made made demos and. And I still did most of the lyrics myself. Then I sent the demos to DJ PP and other producer guy Matti Mikkola, and they arranged the musicians and um, and the recordings. And that's how we worked for a couple of albums. Then that was also when I started to the Laululeja song in Uden Musiikin Kilpal was the first one I didn't write myself. And yeah. uh, and we also started to like do co-writes with some other writers so and also at the same time I did this Korea and Japan song castle song camps wait uh, what what in Japan um well we wrote songs for Japan markets and for I I I never been in Japan to write but okay. but that was a hot market then 10 years ago when everybody was trying to write for that market and and then i got used to this co-writing thing that that there is usually like three persons like one is with the machine one producing and the other two are figuring out the melodies and the lyrics and that's kind of how really many of the pop songs are made nowadays uh, maybe not uh, and this is actually what we do in here in the studio this is not kind of a traditional recording studio this is the maybe the biggest room here where we are now and oh. it's not really big and there is the other rooms are really small and they are more meant to writing music and 
and there are like two or three people group sitting in the rooms upstairs and making pop songs and and that's kind of that method came to my stick thing also so this is a moon and mias also is co right with with Janne Huttunen and Kaisa Korhonen, like I said, and we were sitting in studio a couple of days and figuring out and... But like, where does the initial mm, idea of like, mm, we're going to make a song about a big... It's a, a where we con- make a conversation and we throw like out ideas and okay. maybe that is a more than me as I think the idea came when we... the wet ass pussy song was a hit <laughs> really <laughs> big hit at the time and i was thinking like maybe f- i should do like a like a something called like really a uh, big hard cock or something <laughs> like that <laughs> but it was of course not a good idea but the, that kind of um, developed in the idea we have in the final song it's not about really it's the song it's not about dick or yeah. cox uh, actually but it's uh, like a state of mind <laughs> but, but um but that's how the idea came and sometimes the best ideas just come from somewhere like the roy orbison song i was vacuuming on sunday one time and then i just I started to hum the melody in my head and also the lyrics came to my head and after I finished vacuuming, I called my friend producer Jaakko Salavara, and who I was writing a lot with at the time, and I said that now I have a kind of a I think this is this could be a good song, and he was like, yeah, let's make a demo tomorrow, and I went f- to him his home studio Monday, and it was also funny because there was um uh, he was renewing his studio so we couldn't use it so we did the session in his kitchen only with a laptop macbook laptop i also sang the chorus in the laptops microphone we didn't have even uh, these kind of microphones and i sang the melody there and um, he made the chords and um, basic production there and we almost had the song ready after that and then it took couple of months me for me to write the uh, verses and for him to like finish the production and me really never like re-recorded the chorus vocals so the chorus is what you hear on the on the record is so, yeah, uh, uh, done with <laughs> macbook <laughs> mix mm. so but that i don't know where the idea idea came because i I'm not a like Roy Orbison fan or I I'm I'm actually I like I like Roy Orbison and my mother was a fan when okay. she was uh, she was young so I knew this new Roy Orbison songs and of course the I drove all night song uh, which was for some reason it uh, got quite much rotation MTV in the early 90s i don't know why but i remembered the song and somehow i don't know maybe it was like uh, unconsciousness or maybe it was some higher power who gave me the idea but it was like a ready-made song almost after the vacuuming session I've so tried to vacuum, vacuum and, and now you're uh, like, oh, um, yeah, I've you're tried it, but it, it, it hadn't worked <laughs> yeah. again. So it was maybe a one time only, but yeah. One one is enough in that case. But yeah. so then you kind of had like the lyric. So then it went lyrics and then adding the, the music to it. Yeah, and that's not how it usually uh, goes. Yeah, okay, like it yeah. usually goes. Like we did do the track first, yeah. and I'm. Because I'm also producing and I like to make music with computers and mm-hmm. stuff, so I'm usually also involved in that, and I also do my own own like demo productions even now. And but usually I don't do the the 
like the final production for the okay. for the single or album there's always some what all what all do you play mm-hmm. you play I, I mean like i played i i played in bands like i said and i think i played like every like the regular band instrument that there is like drums yeah. keyboard guitar and bass okay. uh, i played them all in a band but i'm not um really good at anything but but i think that's a kind of good thing as a songwriter not to be too good uh good of a player because if you are really trained and a good player you can play thousands of songs but it may or may not like restrict your mm, interesting and also if you we I'm not the only one, but uh, every songwriter use uses like reference songs or kind of. I like this song, and I want to make a similar kind of song. But when you can't play it exactly like uh, it is on the reference song, then you might might make um, come with come up with something new. Uh. What if you are really like? <laughs> trained in music then you it's really easy to just copy the reference song and it's maybe harder to like make it sound different so i think it's been good to me not to be so so good of a player yeah just good enough good enough and also good enough in every instrument so i can make a drum beat and i can i can make it sound like a real drum beat and i can make a bass line and i know like the instrument a little so i don't do some wacky stuff but not too good so i do some wacky stuff sometimes because wacky stuff it's sometimes good when i made a like the first my the funny demos i did for my band mates and friends and the first one what what really like caught people's like ear and friends were like this is a really good song was a song called uh, Rakkauden Bermudan Kolmio like a Bermuda Triangle of Love and that's kind of a funny production if you listen to it it doesn't like it's not like anything that came out at times in the early 2000 and it was because I was just learning how to do like something kind of R&B but it was my own like version of it so that's maybe why it still sounds kind of quite quite a fresh and not dated at all but i maybe have learned too much in the recent years and i'm kind of missing those days that i didn't have so much clue about what i'm i was doing so a little more raw mm, and just like yeah and and it's maybe in recent years it has come uh, sometimes it's been like to i've been like you say in finland holding the bat too tight okay okay uh, and and really trying to make hits and that's not been good for my songs i think um and that's why we decided that i'm trying i'm doing an album now because then you i don't have to think like every song has to be a hit and uh, i can also try funny things and also that uh, vine elema and kuningas cobra thing was kind of like that that i had an opportunity to do something really different and that paid out so that's the like thing i'm trying to continue now and not 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 yeah, holding yeah. the bat too tight and uh, it, no yeah. it makes total sense because like with playing quarterback like if you're trying to like or when i i grew up playing baseball too and pitching and like it was like if you're aiming it yeah like, you know if like you're really trying to like i want it to just be perfect you're gonna fuck yeah. with yourself mentally and it'll not go there like so it's like at a certain point you just got to let it rip yeah and so it's interesting to hear there's a similarity in the music yeah business and yeah 
Yeah, and also in archery, which is my newest hobby. Oh shit! Okay. Or not the newest, but um, new hobby. I started a uh, little bit before COVID. I started to go. To, we have a um, archery like range near where I live. Okay. So I bought a bought a bow and started to go there, and um, I'm doing this. What they they call in Finland in Finnish, it's vaisto ammunta. I don't actually know what it's in English but it's like um, that you use your uh, voice to your um, not like conscious mind but your oh, like the unconscious like animal uh, instinct ah, okay. in- instinct shooting it's in the Finnish and I it's it's really like if you are trying to aim uh, then you don't hit as good as you when you just like it's hard to explain, but you just kind of aim yeah, yeah, yeah. and concentrate, but you don't actually aim. Like we don't have um, the aiming. Like the uh, bullseye. Yeah, okay. uh, we there's only a bow and an arrow and nothing else. So you really can't even you can like use the tip of the like the point of the arrow. You can use it use that as a reference and try to put it somewhere. But always when you are trying to Oh, keep oh, it like there on, it starts to on the bow like a scope or something yeah like, yeah, yeah we don't have okay, that yeah okay. scope or okay. yeah so but when you're trying to keep the arrow in one point it starts to go like this but when you just look that point and kind of do it and uh, use your instinct then you hit a bull's eye it's oh. like magic sometimes and also if you really just stare at the bull eye and think like it's a um, it's hole and you have to put your arrow through the hole then it goes there but then when you are aiming it goes like 20 centimeters off so oh, shit. it's really interesting so, um, yeah i've never i've never i've you have to try it sometimes yeah, like so um, they I'm, have as this an, as an american i've shot some <laughs> quite a bit of guns <laughs> but i've never shot a bow and arrow before yeah you have to try it it's really really relaxing and you forget everything about everything and yeah no that's that's yeah. that's that would be cool like because it's it's weird how everything relates in that way of uh, like throwing wh- well no matter yeah. what you're throwing yeah. music archery whatever but i'm so glad you brought up the idea of an album because this has always been a question of mine anytime thinking about albums and like you said they're getting kind of rare now because people move to hits and try and do hits more and more. How will you, is it is it up to you at all? Like the track list? Or how, do, how does like track lists get decided? Because sometimes it's like the, the best song is like number 14 or, you know, or like the most view. And you would think you'd, put the best first or something you know if it's like a highlight tape is how does how do you think of track lists Uh, for me it's been it's always been like uh, um, different because uh, the first albums i was really like producing and doing everything by myself and and also the record labels i were working with were friends and uh, really not really experienced in the business and they don't didn't have much much to say and i was really like deciding myself which songs i put on the album and in which order i just tried to do a like a nice listenable thing that it doesn't get boring and and i may be not like just similar songs after another but try to put the similar songs so it doesn't get boring and it's always surprising what comes next and kind of thought i didn't have any some i know some people are really like doing much more effort on that thing and making like an seeing the album as an like um, one art piece and mm. and and i really appreciate that kind of approach but 
I for me it was more like I okay now now I have ten songs we can release an album and <laughs> but uh, for many people it's like they have maybe like thirty songs and then they trying to figure out which of the songs makes the better best like an coconut well, like a yeah. like, um, unit a compilation <laughs> yeah like, yeah and and maybe even drop good songs because they feel like uh, this might be better for my next album or but for me it's never been like that and uh, when i had 10 songs we put the album <laughs> out and that's it and it's kind of changed it's, it has changed little in years but actually I haven't done an album for many years but the last one was kind of the same I have maybe we maybe had a like 20 songs or something and then we when we then we choose what we thought was the best for me and the JPP and and I I wanted to make an kind of um story out of the songs and um, but eventually the record label got their way of doing it uh, because i was not so it was not so important for me so the roy orbison is first yeah uh, that's that's why i was curious and the next single is second yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's the third single for th because of that like album because played, dj yeah. pp he's kind of a pragmatic guy what comes to these album things and he was like why why not put the best song at first and the second best uh, like second and the third best third okay. and you know at, let's put the uh, stranger songs in the end and i was kind of okay with that but um i maybe now i'm all when i'm doing um this new album i maybe try to be try to think about it as an like an art piece and okay. and make uh, some kind of like a um, dramatic uh, yeah, uh, like continue build build, yeah. Uh, or not. but probably it's going to be like the Kuningas Cobra is the first song <laughs> I don't know I don't actually know if the Kuningas Cobra and um, this uh, I don't think the Vanilla Mash songs even I don't think they can be in my album actually okay. because they are already on the Vine Elema album but uh, this new single this is a moon and Mias is definitely going to be on the album also but I'm probably going to do a couple of more singles before the album I have what kind of music is it right now because the mm. last song was kind of more country -y, right? or yeah I, I mean, yeah I just yeah. know the at least the music video is more like I think it's going to be more like electronic now. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, cool. Because I'm, um, and that's the thing. I it's easy for me to do myself in home. I like to do songs in lying on couch, uh, uh, just using the laptop, and it's harder to do that country kind of and the band stuff of course you can do demos and then later on add the band but i can do really kind of quite demos that are quite close to the what comes to the album and and also i've always done electronic music like the musa basha thing and that was like the first thing was that would that be your intro mm. into that was kind of i had this we had this kind of um finish kind of a proto streaming platform mixer piston net where i did some the things before even musa basha i i did some like uh, psychedelic trance and oh, shit. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> and also kind of um, like humor songs uh there and um, but yeah that and ele but the electronic music has always been a big thing for me and the country thing came later and um, i don't know it's not a i i still like country and listen to country and i have also some demos which which are more into that that genre but mm, but maybe i'm now i'm always i'm i'm 80s kid and i've 
grown up with kind of an electronic pop and disco and that's kind of music that's always been important for me and I now I kind of feel that that's what I want to do and uh, I I'm not giving up with the country thing and um, more uh, folky thing but that's not what I want to do right now so yeah you kind of just experiment mm. with a little bit of everything and that's fun cool because and that's so fun that I can do that it's because I have this my own own lane yeah. kind of and I've that's always no lane, no lane yeah. and that's the best lane yeah. and yeah. I've even done some like um, that's only one song but on my Nixia Knox album there is one more like maybe even like heavy or like metal song and uh, or even two there's a song called Kissan Karvoja and then a song called Karvoja. Kissan no, Karvoja yeah. and, um, Cat's Hair, Cat's hair. <laughs> it was originally different idea it was um, it came from the idea that uh, you have a um, uh different kind of hair in your teeth when you <laughs> come home and then your wife is like what do you have in your teeth uh, and that was the original idea man where the word that idea come from <laughs> mm, it's actually a story it's an anecdote of one um uh now deceased a finnish singer who had this kind of uh, thing I went to then dentist and <laughs> dentist was like uh, I have to say you one thing and he was like what do I have shit on my nose I said, no but you have pussy hair on your teeth oh is it was it the other way around <laughs> yeah. That's, like uh, that's kind of a, I don't know if it's a real story, but it's about one okay, okay. musician. Who, and that's where the idea came. And then we asked the top Finnish singer, um, Kaya Ko, to be on that song. And of course, we had to change the title and the um, lyrics a bit because it wouldn't have worked that way. And But now it's about, like, I have... Uh, I have um, cat's hair in my uh, in my shirt when I come home, and the uh, wife is like, "Why, where, why, why ah, you have cat okay, hair?" Okay. Yeah. And cat is a good play on words as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big we in some people court call girls cats. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Especially I think you call musicians cats. I. I, I at least in like 50s and 60s, oh the yeah, like jazz cat, players. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cat, yeah. yeah, and then like Portuguese and Spanish, like you'd call a hot girl a gata. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, yeah but yeah, that's kind of a, usually, it's it's usual that we have some kind of a really um, boyish idea that it's not quite an. That stuff you can even i have kids now and okay. uh, you know and i have kid fans and i i would like to do whatever i want but i a little bit think of that i don't want to do like two shocking things and uh, i don't want to i don't want to make the kids ask too many questions <laughs> for from their parents and stuff so it's many times the original idea is a little bit rougher and then be just a little bit 